That's where a lot of the inspiration and the theme for all our advertising campaign came from. And it's all in the black and white movie and all that. And that's, that's how we create basically the atmosphere into our advertising campaign. And the one thing I didn't mention, and I should have, is when we started advertising, when we started advertising, it was funny because we were at the time, you know, I mean, everything, we were, we were so, for us, we were, we were starting from nothing. We were so successful right away that we didn't know what was happening to us. And so here we were, we were doing advertising, but what we were saying to everybody was, hey, we do advertising, but we do it for the image. We don't do it for selling. We, the last thing we do, we want, is to sell more, you know, more, more garments, more units, okay? It's true, we were saying that and everybody thought we were crazy. And, and, they, and it, was a true, it was true because we could not make more than what we were making, you know, at the time, because we had to build up and all that. And we were refusing to sell to so many people, but this, this was the, this was the, the this was the, uh, what was happening at Guess. But just to tell you that from the beginning, all the advertising was all about the image, was all about creating an image for the brand, and not about selling the product, because in a lot of the advertising campaigns, especially in the 80s, a little bit less now, now you can see more of the product, a lot, a lot of the campaign, there were, there, 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 there were basically no product, or sometimes it was not even our product, you know? Like the one with Claudia Schiffer with a bustier. That was not us, <laughs> but it looked good, so we did it. <laughs> And we are not selling the bustier. So this is what guess is about, and um, that, that's the end of, the, of my, uh, of my uh, presentation. I hope I uh, addressed what you wanted me to address, Mark. Yeah, OK, so now, uh, you know, uh, please, please feel free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I, I'm, I'm struck about our professor here because, I mean, he, he, he gives a presentation like, uh, like a, 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 an all-world college professor. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> anyway, do we have some questions out on the floor? How about right here in the beginning? How do you see the recession taking Excuse me? How do you see the recession taking retail right now? Right now? Yeah. It's tough. It is, it is tough. And, but I tell you, we, we've, seen, we've seen other recessions, and we went through other recessions. And uh, again, what you have to do today, and this is what we are doing, we say, listen, there are things that we can control and things that we cannot control. So as a retailer, we have, and as anybody in the industry, we have to focus on all the things that we can control, that we are doing, okay? And make the best out of everything. You have to be aware of the crisis and the, you know, so you, you do, what you do is you control your inventory, you control your expenses, and you, you go through the crisis. So right now, the recession, it's gonna be, Unfortunately, it's gonna it's gonna last quite quite a bit, okay? And uh, uh, we have to all be very careful and to to manage basically through the through the through the crisis. From what I was saying, we have to reduce our risk. We cannot take as much risk as we used to, okay? And control our inventory and control control everything we're doing. We we. Uh, we slow down the expansion, okay? We're slowing that. I'm telling you, you know, I'm telling you everything which is already public knowledge because we're a public company. So I have to be careful about what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, uh, everything is public. So uh, we are slowing down, we are slowing. If not, uh, I have my president here, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> uh, we're, slowing down the, we're slowing down the expansion and uh, we are, Reevaluating all all our stores and all that to see which one 
is sustainable, which one is not, and this is this is what we're doing. But it's gonna be it's gonna be. I think most of 2009 is gonna be tough. You know, hopefully, hopefully, at the uh, second half is gonna be better, but the first half is gonna be tough for a lot of people. Okay, and uh, again, what? What's, what's lucky for us is that we have really diversified our business and really by going international, so we are, we are not as much exposed as a company to the recession here. We are, we are definitely feeling the recession here, but we are not impacted as much as other retailers who are purely in America. Okay, is that answering? Anybody else? Here. I want to know when the company started, when Get started in 1981 and 1982, how did the four brothers agree upon the name? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that question. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. We we were looking for a name because we didn't want to, we didn't want to use MGA, so we were looking for a name. And uh, we we were looking. You heard my brother earlier in the video saying that. Three of the brothers basically didn't speak any English, okay? I was the only one who was speaking a little bit of English. But three of us didn't speak English. So we wanted a name which was very short and very easy to pronunciate both in French and in English, <laughs> okay? So we were, well, we started, you know, there are so many things. When we started, we were, we were, we started in 800 square feet on the 12th floor on Broadway, okay? On the Broadway here in Los Angeles, in, in, uh, in two offices. And if you look well at the logo, the triangle, on the small triangle, there's two numbers there, 1201, 1203. For you to know, these were the number of the suites where we were, where we started. 1201, 1203 were the suites in, uh, on Broadway at the, in this building. Anyhow, so we were there, and one morning, very early in the morning, one of my brother came and said, I think I find the name. Say, so I told him, what is it? He said, guess. <laughs> so I start, and true story, so I start giving him names. I give him a name, no, I give another name, no, 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 I give him like seven, eight names, no, 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 no. I say, so what is it? He said, guess. So I give him more names. <laughs> And it's a true story. So I give him more names. And each time again, it's no, 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 no. So I say, so tell me, what is it? He said, yes. I said, you know what? I have too much work, OK? Let me work. When you want to tell me, you tell me. And he said, no, I'm telling you the name is Guess. So I said, oh, I love it, you know? So <laughs> and, and that's all. And again, our lawyer, no, no, no. It's a common name you cannot register, you know, don't even try. Again, when you want to do something, do it, okay? You find a way to do it. The way we found to do it, question mark, okay? Guess with a question mark, then we could register, okay? Now, the thing is though, when we started though, so, so here we are now, the, okay, we call the company Guess, right? We call company suppliers, uh, okay? you know, to, 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 to ask for something. Which company? Guess. Boom. <laughs> they were hanging up on us all the time. So then we learned and we say, guess jeans, you know. OK, so they, then, then they knew. So that's how we find the name. And let me tell you, the name, the name to tell you in life, to be aware of what's going on around you. How did he come up with this name? We were, we were going downtown every day. And we were driving on Olympic Boulevard, going downtown. And at one, one, at one of the traffic lights, there was a big billboard, a, Ma a McDonald billboard. And it, it was, in, in, uh, in 82, it's when they, they introduced the, the Big Mac, the double one. And the, the, the thing was, guess who has the biggest hamburger? And the, the word guess was bigger than the rest of the sentence. And as we were driving there, so this struck my brother, you know, as, uh, because we were stopping there. 
And so that's how we come up with the name gas. Okay? Things in life. Down here? <laughs> Let me tell you, we started, uh, we started in 72, all four brothers together, again from scratch, right? From nothing. And uh, it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, to say the least. Because it's a challenge, it's great, because we're all brothers. But at the same time, it's a challenge because with a brother, you act like you cannot act with somebody who is not a brother, right? You know, you're, you can tell anything, you can fight, you can argue, you know. So it's, it, is, it is a challenge, but at the same time, it was our strength. It was, it was, our, it was our strength all along. And um, unfortunately, in um, 1993, in 1993, we had, uh, we had a big, going back to brand and going back to vision of the brand and stay true to yourself and all that. In 1993, one of the brothers, uh, George, who is the one who came up with the name, um, wanted, because in, uh, uh, already at the time, the department stores, believe it or not, we're having some problems already. And uh, so he came and he said, you know what? I don't believe in the department stores, you know. I want to sell to Jesse Penny. Say, all three of us, we say, absolutely not. We don't want to. You know, that will be, that will be the end of it, you know. Right now, there's a small slowdown, you know, in the, in the sales. But, you know, we should, not, we should never go because you stop there, you know, and then after that, you know, you're going, you're going, you're going to go on the, the only way is going to be down, down and down. And we've seen that over and over and over. You know, again, you've, you've been, you're, you're probably, most of you, you're, you're probably too young, but when we started in the business, um, the big, big denim brand, Sassoon, Jordache, Sergio Valente, all names which don't exist anymore today, right, Gloria Vanderbilt, I mean, on and on and on and on. What did they do when the business is slowing down? Oh, we're going to sell, you know, to the next year who's begging you to sell to them. They're begging you because you're here, right? Okay? But then, then, then when you start selling, then sure enough, the brand. So we didn't want to do it, right? So, in, uh, so he said, listen, so then that, that was a breaking point. And then in 93, we bought him out of the company. We bought, we bought, so he retired from the company. And then, uh, and then we went on three brothers, and uh, it went fine, until one of the brothers retired uh, five, four or five years ago. He retired, and that's it. So now we're two brothers in the company. But it's great to work with brothers. Challenging, but it's great. Uh, in the back there? Oh. Where? Yeah, you. We. Oui. In French. <laughs> could, could, you, could you stand up so he could hear you? For somebody that wanted to start in the industry, where would you advise starting? Excuse me? For somebody that wanted to start in the industry, where would you advise starting? Where? Yeah. In this industry? You're in Los Angeles, right? You have, uh, you have basically so much open to you here, and I mean it, okay? You have a great industry, of course, in denim, okay? You have a great industry in knitwear, okay? And you have a great industry in contemporary, okay? So it's, a, it's not, it's not a, at the end of the day, okay? The best advice that I can give you, all of you, is not to do something for the business, but to do first what you believe in. First, where your passion is, OK? Because there is room in everything. There is always room for somebody who is coming with fresh ideas, OK? In any segment of the business, OK? So you can basically start. And the, the great thing here in Los Angeles is you can start really small, 
okay, and really make it happen. Because there is already such an infrastructure of fashion in this, in, the, in, this, in this city that it's much easier to start here than basically in any other city in, uh, in, uh, in the States. Would you agree? Uh, you know, it's a theme that's gone through uh, every, single, every single presentation that we've had. I remember uh, Mickey Drexler, who took uh, uh, Gap from 300 million to 14 billion and then was let go for, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. why do you let someone go that did that? But anyway, so he just took J. Crew and then took it to, you know, another multi billion dollar company. Yeah. And Mickey said over and over, he said the same thing that Maurice is saying. He says, follow your heart, follow your passion. Uh, I don't know if any of you saw Bob McKnight's, you know, with $2.8 billion of surfwear. Bob des described how, how he, he, you know, how he, he loaded the, the, the board shorts into the trunk of his car and he drove to, to Val Surf in the, in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in the valley, the same way Maurice is telling me that, that what he did with the blouses in Marseille and, 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 and that he just improvised and he didn't know how to put rivets in because they, they, you know, they had to have the this, <laughs> this string. So he asked somebody where to go and then he found out that he had to get his board shorts down to somebody in Carlsbad to put in the rivets. To, you know, so, now, you know, after that, we learned. Pardon me? After that, we learned. Well, okay, so we bought, but, but, we bought some machine, and you should have seen. So in the back of the first store that we opened in Marseille, there was an apartment. We, 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 we transformed this apartment into a small, into a small finishing plant. And we, the brothers, we bought a, a buttonhole machine and, <laughs> and a button machine. And we, here we were doing the buttonhole and, the, and putting the buttons. So I, I think the whole point is that uh, many of us that, that, that have, have started companies co came from, from, from you know, some other uh, area. I graduated in English literature and worked for Price Waterhouse. And you know, I said, yeah, I'm going to make this store that's only going to sell denim. And it was in, in Amsterdam. And people said, you can't do that. You'll never survive. How can you sell one product? And I said, well, I'm going to sell this one product. And, you know Maurice's story and and some of the other speakers that we've had in the series are 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 your stories because yeah. you know basically you know each one of you is an individual and each one of you has a passion for something and so it's you know the one of the greatest joys that you can have in in, in life is never having to go to work because you never go to work if you do what you love because it's a hobby you you really have you really have to follow your passion and again, I will never say it enough. Stay true to yourself. It has happened in this business over and over that when people lose the focus of who they are, they lose their identity, they lose their business. Okay, we've seen it over and over. I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna give some name, but because they are still around. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I tell you, you know, not long ago, not long ago, let me tell you a real, a real short story. A friend of mine who has a big, big business, okay, sold the business, and then bought another, a designer. I'm not going to say the name again. But a real designer. And then he wanted to reproduce what he did just before with the other business, which he grew really big. Okay? But they were different. One was more like in the middle of the market, and the other one is a real designer. And they wanted to have this designer really design and have like shopping, shopping, all the department stores and this and that. So to have like, and it didn't work. So, we had we, we were we were at my home one 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 day and we were talking and I, I said, listen, you're crazy, you know, you you want this guy, you know, who really love to do this and you want to force him to do something that the guy doesn't like, you know, of course it's not gonna work. They understood, changed completely the, the strategy, okay? They they let the guy be the designer that he wants to be and design what he loves to do. And what they did instead is they 
really develop an entire lifestyle around this design, okay? Which means with handbags, with shoes, with everything. And now they are very successful, and now they are expanding everywhere. But to tell you how very, very important it is to really, really do what you have in you, what you believe in, okay? So it's not, it's not about where the opportunity is. It's about what you love to do, what you want to do, and how you're going to do it, okay? Let's take a couple more questions. Uh, yes? My question was, as you continue to grow larger, are you not afraid that you'll hit a size limit where that family feel, that entrepreneurial feeling, will get lost in that making that innovation? That's, uh, that's a challenge that, that we have all the time. And uh, let me tell you, we are working very hard. And I mean it. We are working very hard in order to not have that in the company, and to really keep the company as a family company. And we are, that's why we have the open door policy, and then we have seminars for, uh, one is coming, uh, when is it? In March, right? It's in March. In March, we have what we call the DM meeting, which means that we have all the district manager and some of the manager and the regional manager from all the stores around the country and in Canada and in Mexico all coming together for a seminar. And we invite even some of the, some of the, the DM from, uh, from Europe. And we have these this, this three days nonstop of training and, and, and everything, and, and really trying to give to everybody the same culture and the same entrepreneurship spirit you know, that we have lived through in the company. And we are, we are expanding now. We are, we, are, we are all over the world, but as I said, you know, there is so much more to do still. Okay? Let's take but, one last question. Yeah. Yes, in the back. You? you think, could you stand up? It is. It is, it is a very large market. And what the reason I'm saying that is because we, we really have a lot to learn. Because we started only last year, OK? And it's very different. It is very different from a brand point of view. Don't forget, we are not Louis Vuitton. We are not Christian Dior, you know. We are just a brand, right? And for a brand, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of difficult there because the market is not open yet to just a regular brand. You know, it's, it's starting. And that's why we, 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 we have open stores in, in Shanghai, in Beijing, in, in, in quite a few. Uh, we have now, I think, 17 or 18 stores, you know, which in a year, it's, 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 already, you know, it's already good. But we are, we are learning. We are, we, are, we are learning there, you know, what is exactly the right mix of product and what really the, 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 the customer really, really want there. So it's a, it's a learning process for us. It's, and it's vi the, the reason I'm saying that is because as much as Hong Kong is part of China, it's very different from China. And we thought that it's true. Main, mainland China, we, th we wanted to run it the same way we run our stores in Hong Kong, and it's very different. So that, that's what I'm saying. So in, probably in a year, I will know more about it. Maurice, it, tonight was really, really special. And uh, what we really try and do is to, uh, obviously, we're in an academic institution, the University of Southern California, which is an academ academic environment. And what we try and do in this lecture series is to bring the real world to the, to the academic world and to make a marriage of these and to help the, the students and the prospective professional people to make the transition into the uh, into the real world by by having people such as yourself come and share with 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 everybody, uh, you know, some 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 real life experiences and and you know the real the real deal, and I just uh, must say that you know tonight y you've just done a, a brilliant job and I think that. 
Thank you. Uh, and uh, for, for me, uh, personally, uh, you, you know, your presentation, I said you were a world-class university professor. I, I, I love your ingredients because uh, I, th I think ingredients are easy to, to, to remember in your little card in the, in, in the bag. Uh, as a uh, with your ingredients, I think everybody can take that with them, and I think those 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 six yeah. little ingredients are something you could take with you forever because they're true. Let me let me just say one one last thing is basically whatever you're gonna do, wherever you're gonna start, just remember one thing: you're gonna be much more ahead of when we started in the business. Why? Because we never went to college, all of us. I'm the only one who finished high school. <laughs> My brothers didn't even finish high school. So you're going to be much, much more ahead of us in, the, you know, in terms of knowing about business, in terms of knowing about the fashion industry. Follow your passion, follow your heart, and stay true to yourself. OK? Thank you. Non, non, très, très bon. Merci. Merci. Merci.